Greetings. And this is the great one himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, here with an anarchy moment. This is a theory that pretty much just popped into my head like 10 minutes ago. So there may be problems with this, because I haven't had enough time to think it through all the way, because you know thinking is a thing that those of you who are statists don't do. But I want to throw this out to the universe, and it'll help me get it out of my brain also. It'll help me clarify it a little bit. I talk, and in fact, I just recently talked in a previous edition of Anarchy Moment. I talked about how people consume entertainment, like television. They watch TV, and they cheer for the good guy, who is Spartacus, who's trying to overcome the Romans. You know, but then they go out into real life, and they support the Romans, or in our case, they support the government, they support Obama, right? So on television, you're watching Spartacus, you know, and he kills Glaber, and you're all excited. In real life, if, say, for example, Stefan Molyneux killed Obama, well, you would be on Obama's side, and you would have Stefan Molyneux executed, because on television, you can recognize that Glaber is, excuse me, is the bad guy, in real life, you are somehow not capable of recognizing that Obama is the bad guy. Why? Well, because Obama, of course. And I also talked about role-playing games. And I talked about how the in the exalted role-playing game about how they so accurately describe the problems with our society, the state, the government, and yet, in real life, people can't see that these very exact same things that are going on. And I'm composing thoughts here. Hang on. And I've had a fair amount of coffee, too. I, sh I should be almost functionally literate by now, but I'm not. So I'm watching this movie right now called Get Low which is really good so far. I'm only 40 minutes in or so, but it's been really good. And again, I'm sitting around watching this and the old man character, you know, is spouting all of this wisdom about how people fear what they don't understand and you can't hear if you don't listen. And I can imagine people watching this movie and being like, oh yeah, wow, that's so true. And then these people go out into real life to interact with other people and their whole attitude is, well, we need to bomb Syria. You know, we need to kill brown people. We need to give the government flying robots. We need to have national identification cards. We need to take guns away from people. We need to put people in prison for having marijuana. You know, on and on and on and on. And these people, they consume fiction. They consume television. They consume books. They consume movies. They consume role-playing games. And... In this whole thing, they're pretending to be on the side of freedom. And then they go into real life, and they're just sociopathic murderers who want everybody who's different from them put in prison. And they want a law against everything. And they want people in foreign countries to be bombed into submission. And they just can't stop sucking Obama's cock, or Romney's cock, or whoever, you know, or Ron Paul's cock. Because they can't fucking think for themselves. So I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking about this, and trying to figure out, I've been trying to figure this out for years, why the fuck you people are this stupid? And then, this is the thought that came to me this morning. I myself have said the reason I like role-playing games is because they give me an opportunity to do things that I can't or will not do in real life. For example, I gave the example of the exalted game where you can be a solar exalted and you can be a quote-unquote good guy but at the same time you can still march a thousand virgins into the temple and cut their hearts out and i said that's the sort of thing i want to do in a role-playing game because in real life i have no desire to cut the hearts out of a thousand virgins i mean i probably can't get away with that if i tried 
Unless, of course, I was elected like Obama is. Obama can fucking bomb as many children as he wants because he's black. But I can't bomb any children. I can't cut the hearts out of any virgins. And I don't want to. That's the other difference between me and Obama is I don't want to kill children. And, of course, I don't have a Nobel Peace Prize for murdering people either. And I just spilled coffee on the ground while trying to drink. Sorry, technically floor, not ground. And then the revelation came. Just as I enjoy fiction, whether it's role-playing games or whether it's science fiction, I'm a big sci-fi fan. I also like alternate histories a lot. So I enjoy fiction that allows me to do things that I cannot or will not do in real life. And that's when it clicked for me. I think what's happening with those of you who are statist is you're doing the same thing. In real life, those of you who are statist are never going to stand up to the oppressors. In real life, those of you who are statist are never going to be wise. You're never going to be philosophical. In real life, so, all right, so in the first example, this is why you cheer for Spartacus. Because in real life, you are supporting the government. You are supporting the emperor. You are supporting the Roman Empire. I mean, you are supporting the American Empire. Obama bombs children and you swallow his cum. If anybody opposed Obama, you would want that person killed. That's why when you watch Spartacus, you're on the side of the slave and not the slave master because you cannot, in real life, you can't be on the side of the slave. Right? So when you're watching Get Low and the old man is spouting wisdoms about can't hear if you don't listen and people fear what they don't understand, you're, you identify with him because in real life, you don't have that kind of wisdom. In real life, anybody different than you, well, there should be a law against what they do, and if they don't stop doing it, they should be put into a cage. And of course, with role-playing games, this is, I, this is why I, I don't play with the group I used to play with before. I mean, they're all great people, yada, 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 status, yada, yada, yada. But they're, you know, in the games, they always had to play these very black and white characters. We have a code against killing, and we only do what's right and truth and justice in the American way, and yada, yada, yada. And when, when we had the opportunity to play in Exalted, they couldn't handle it because there were too many options and there were too many gray zones, and they literally couldn't do it. And so in the role-playing games, they play these characters that are always on the side of right and never kill anybody and always protect innocence and all this other stuff. Why? Because in real life, these very same people support Obama murdering people in foreign countries with flying robots. These very same people support other humans being put into rape cages for having marijuana. So I think this might be it. This is why popular culture, the books, you know, the movies, the... Yeah, what, my, my brain hurts. <laughs> books, movies, TV shows, that's what I'm looking for, TV shows. You know, role-playing games, that's why they're all filled with these virtuous, moral characters who oppose oppression, who oppose slavery, because, and that's why this stuff gets consumed, because in real life, statists will not do these things. And the point of fiction, the point of consuming entertainment, I think for most people, is to experience things you can't experience in real life. I have to think about this a little bit more because there could be some flaws in this. I mean, this theory is 30 minutes old. But so far it makes sense. We'll see if it stands to the test of time. <laughs>